Hey guys, so in the previous video we were kind of solving simple trigonometric equations by using a graph. Here we're going to look at another method where we use something called a cast diagram and the quadrant rule. So first up, what is a cast diagram? Well, we we're going to use a circle like this guy. Now the idea is we're splitting up a 360 degree rotation into four quadrants. So, we're going to do each graph separately and build up our diagram as we go. So, it's very important, 0 degrees starts on the positive x-axis and then we work anti-clockwise around the circle. So, the positive y-axis is 90 degrees so that makes our first quadrant. Our second quadrant is then between 90 and 180. Then between 90 and 270. And then our last one between 270 and 360. Which is just 0 degrees. So what we're going to do with this guy. With all three functions. We are going to be asking in which quadrant. Uh, in which quadrants are which functions positive. So first up, let's look at sign. So let's sketch the sine graph between 0 and 360 degrees. So hopefully by now you're quite familiar with this. It looks like that. Where this point is 180 degrees. This point is 360. We've got a peak at 90 degrees and a trough at 270 degrees. So in terms of the quadrants of our circle, 0 to 90 is here, so that's our first quadrant. 90 to 180 is there, and then the 3 and 4 go there. Now, in our diagram, we are only interested in where sine is positive. So, sine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2. So, we're going to write a sine theta in both of those. Now, let's sketch cos. So, cos is going to look... like this so this is 90 degrees first x intercept the trough is at 180 and then the next x intercept is 270 and then it ends at 360 so our positive quadrants are 1 and 4 so quadrant two and three are negative so we don't care about those so we're going to write cos in quadrant one and in quadrant four okay now we just need to do tan so our tan graph between zero and three is sixty It's going to look something like this. So we go up like that. This asymptote is a 90. Second one is a 270. The graph's going to go like that. And there, so it cuts the x-axis at 180. And then the final bit of the graph looks like that. So, our positive quadrants here are quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So, quadrants 2 and 4 are negative. This would be 2 and this would be 4. So, we're going to write tan of theta in quadrants 1 and 3. So, tan theta 
in quadrant one and tan theta in quadrant three. So, we've now completed our diagram, but this isn't quite how we like to think about it. So, every function is positive in quadrant one. So instead of writing them as sine theta, cos theta, and tan of theta, we just put an A in the for all functions. In quadrant two, we put an S for sine. In quadrant three, you guessed it, we put a T for tan. And then in quadrant four, we put a C. So, that's where the name cast diagrams comes from. Although that's a bit annoying because it doesn't start with quadrant one. Like that, we're going four, one, two, three. So the way that I would remember the order, some people would say, all students take calculus. I think that's boring. I would go for Avengers, stop, total, calamity. So this is our cast diagram. Now we're going to look at using it to solve equations. Okay, first example then. So we want to use a cast diagram to solve sine of theta equals one half. So, first thing, are we finding or are we solving sine of theta equals a positive or negative value? It's positive. So, that tells us we want to identify the quadrants where sine of theta is positive. And that is quadrants one and two. So there are going to be solutions or a solution in quadrant one and in quadrant two. So in quadrant one, we can draw a line out to the circumference. Now we call the angle between that line and the horizontal positive x-axis. We're going to call that theta, like that. Now. What we're going to do is draw a line in quadrant T that mirrors that line. So this angle here between that line and the negative x-axis is also theta. Now, the angles that we want are this first blue theta on the right. So we're working anti-clockwise around from the positive x-axis so we want that blue theta and then the other angle that we want is the angle around to that second blue line now the angle there is going to be 180 minus theta so for the first value we need to use our calculators although Sine of theta equals one half is one of the exact trig values that we should theoretically be familiar with. So if we inverse sine of one half, we will get 30 degrees. So that gives us our first solution, theta equals 30 degrees. Now our other value that we want is 180 minus theta, so minus 30, and that is going to give us 150 degrees. So our two solutions in the range 0 to 360 are theta equals 30 and 150. There's our first example of solving a trick equation using a cast diagram. Good times. Okay, second example we want to solve cos of theta is root 2 over 2. So again, root 2 over 2 is a positive value. So we first need to think about which quadrants cos is positive in. Now that is in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4. So, in quadrant 1, we first of all 
going to draw a line from the centre to the outside of the circle. Now, the angle between that line and the x-axis is angle theta. Now, with sine and cos, you always mirror this line through whichever axis uh, the next quadrant is in, or the other quadrant that we are interested in. So with cos here, we're interested in uh, quadrant 4. So this line is going to be mirrored down into quadrant 4, making this angle here also angle theta. So the other angle that we are interested in here, so angle theta is our first solution and then we want this angle all the way around which is going to be 360 minus theta. So we need our calculator for the first solution so if we did inverse cos of root 2 over 2, you will get 45 degrees. So our first value of theta is 45 degrees. Our second one is 360 minus 45, which is 300 and 15 degrees. So, the two values of theta between 0 and 360 are 45 and 315. Good times. Okay, last one for this video then. So I'm going to do a part 2 to this. Obviously in here we've had quite ideal uh, angles. There will be no numbers. They've all been positive, and they've all been in the range 0 to 360. So, in part 2, and maybe 3, we'll look at negative values and finding values outside of the range 0 to 360. Okay, so, for this one then, we want to do tan of theta equals root 3. So, root 3 is positive, identify the quadrants that we want. Tan is positive in quadrant 1 and 3. So what we're actually going to do with tan is draw a line one long continuous line that goes through the centre and touches the circumference in both quadrants. So it's a diameter of the circle. So like this then this angle here is theta and by vertically opposite angles this angle T is theta. So the first angle then that we want is going to be theta and the second angle that we want so this guy that goes all the way around like that well that's actually going to be 180 plus theta. So that's the whole 180 degree turn between the two x-axes and the positive x-axes and the negative x-axes and then plus angle theta. So if we get our first solution so you take the inverse tan of root 3, we get 60 degrees. So that's our first value. Our second value then is 180 plus 60, which gives us 240. So our two values for theta are Theta equals 60 and 240. Okay guys, that's it for this one. 
So I'm at least going to do a part two, maybe three. Who knows? So yeah, that.